YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Saint Raven here with another video, and in this video, I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we all watch, which kind of seems like it was forever ago. It seemed like the Falcons Ravens game happened so long ago. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like it was like ages ago. Uh, but I'm here to share my post game thoughts on the game that we watched between the Ravens and the Falcons in a game uh, that the Ravens did win, um, seventeen to nine. Uh, so a one score game in the game. It felt even closer than the score was even though it was just an eight point game it felt even closer than that because it was even closer than that um but anyway this game uh it was a nice win for the ravens and they they took care of their business um even though they don't like making easy stuff easy but they took care of their business and this game they clinched a playoff berth um they actually got both of the scenarios that they needed to have. Well, actually, they, they didn't even need both scenarios. They needed one or the other, but both of them ended up working out for the Ravens because they either needed the Bengals to beat the Patriots or they needed the Packers to beat the Dolphins. Both of those things ended up happening, and so Ravens got plenty of help. Um, so that was nice to see. But it's a beautiful thing that, again, we talked about it before. It's nice that with two games left, they are in the playoffs. Um, they don't, no matter what, how these next two games go, Ravens have a shot. Uh, so we'll see what happens with these next two games, especially with the Steelers game being on Sunday night. So the world will be watching. Maybe uh, like the NFL must have got the heads up from the Ravens or Lamar. Like, oh, he'll be back. He'll be back. Because would they put the Ravens and Steelers, Tyler Huntley versus Kenny Pickett on prime time? I mean, it, it, it is a nasty little, nasty schedule next week. It's not like very many interesting games, but anyway, um, getting this, into this game, uh, and I, I got I got to go off memory because again, it felt like it was forever ago. Um, Greg Roman, we'll, we'll we'll start with him with, with John Harbaugh. Um, trying to think if anything really stood out about John Harbaugh in this game. I don't think so. Um, I felt I felt for uh, Falcons coach because he was going off on in refs, but he had every reason to. Like, the the Falcons were getting okey-doked in this game by the refs, and that was so weird to see, like, as Ravens fans, because we're so used to that happening to the Ravens. I'm, I'm sure probably every team be saying that, well, minus Patriots fans and Bucks fans over the past couple of years, but I'm sure every team besides those two fan bases feel like, man, we be getting okey-doked by the refs every time and all the time and da-da-da-da. But, yeah, us Ravens fans, we really do feel that. So when it happens, when the shoe's on the other foot, it's like, whoa, what, what's happening here? And Falcons coach was heated at the refs all game. Let, I know he was not team keep it clean, um, but he was letting them know how he felt. I think one of the worst calls that they had go in favor of the Ravens was the holding call on Cordero Patterson's touchdown. It should have been a touchdown. It should have stood. But Brandon Stevens, he did a flop job and acted like he fell. And then the refs called holding. And then after, after the game, he tweeted a picture of an Oscar. So, like, he, Oscars are given out to the best actors uh, every year and whatnot. So, he knew. We knew. But he knew. Um, and there was, there was some more stuff. There was a catch that they ruled incomplete where I think it was one of the tight ends. Like, he caught the ball and then he, like, rolled. And I think Patrick Queen tried to knock it out. And Patrick Queen did loosen it up a little bit. But I felt like the guy still had control over it. There was that. And then there was... There was another one too, but I can't even remember what it was because that, that game, it seems like it was weeks ago. Um, but yeah, so as far as coaching, again, Harbaugh, I don't, I can't recall anything that he did that stood out. Um, he did challenge the, uh, the defensive pass interference where they said uh, JPP got a finger on the ball and everybody was making a joke about it and whatnot. Um, but I guess it was a good challenge if he really felt like JPP got a finger on the ball. Uh, I think that that stood. I don't think that was overturned. Uh, but anyway, Greg Roman. Greg Roman. Oh, boy. Um, there's a lot of same stuff. Uh, the design QB runs, not that they must come to an end, but it, it's like Greg Roman gets so QB design run happy a lot. It, it, it happens so much. Tyler Huntley was getting busted up uh, against the Falcons. He was getting whacked against the Falcons. And some of it was his fault. Uh, for not sliding, but there, there were just a lot of QB design runs, man. A lot. And it was just like, man, he really still going back to and and again, the 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 poor sequence of play calling, it continued. It, it's like it's like it's it's a habit. 
It's a habit. And, and we're used to it, but it's a habit. And they, I mean, we, we've been talking about this for the longest. So, so I, I was about to say they need to get it fixed before the playoffs, but are things really going to change? I, we'll see. Um, and it's like when, when the play calling, it just it lacks a flow. There's such a lack of a flow when it comes to the play calling. Um, it's, it's like your, your players and your personnel, they, they have to be more than perfect. When the, call, the, when the plays are being called, then you have to be more than perfect to still have success. You get what I'm saying? And, and it's like, man, it, it, it can be very, very frustrating. Um, they started the game off. Uh, Tyler Huntley, they, they, he was trying to go deep. I, I, and I liked it. I liked it. I respect it. I'm like, okay, Tyler Huntley really pushing his ball downfield or trying to at least. And I love it. I uh, figured he was going to connect on one of them soon enough. And he got Sammy Watkins early for that big play. Early on in the game. Hit Sammy Watkins deep. I'm like, okay, there goes Sammy. Never saw Sammy again for the rest of the game. Didn't hear nothing from him. Not a peep, not a sound, not a catch, not a block, not nothing. Maybe he might have had some of the blocks and stuff. But I, I didn't see him at all after that. I did, I did not see him at all after that. So I don't know what happened to Sammy Watkins after that. If you know what happened to Sammy Watkins after that, please let me know because I didn't see him. Um, but that was a really nice play. I had actually thought. I didn't, I didn't get hyped over the play at first because I thought he had stepped out of bounds and came back in. So I was thinking, oh, boy, it's about to be illegal touching. But nope, he didn't. I'm like, look at Sammy. There we go. Um, Tyler Huntley, uh, he he had an almost pick in this game where he went deep for, was it for Josh Oliver or for Mark Andrews? I forgot which which one of those was the almost pick. But thank goodness it was an almost pick, so we could be happy about that. Um, he There was another time where he, he missed, I think it was likely in the back of the end zone that was wide open, or it was Andrews, one of them two. I forgot. He, he, he missed it. He didn't see him. Um, but Tyler Huntley, even though he missed, he did not miss Demarcus Robinson. And Demarcus Robinson, he made a uh, he made a tough catch. Caught a, caught the ball with his arms um, instead of his hands. But hey, as long as you catch the ball, man, as long as you catch the ball, and that was the Ravens' first passing touchdown since November twenty seventh. That was their first passing touchdown to a wide receiver since week three. And that's crazy since week three. But when you think about where the emphasis of this team goes, it's obviously not the receivers. Everybody knows that. So maybe it's not that surprising. Um, but shout out to uh, Tyler Huntley and Demarcus Robinson for ending that streak. That was the only touchdown of the game, even though if you look at the score, you would automatically think, oh, Ravens got two touchdowns and they kicked the field goal. But no, no, no. They got that touchdown. And then on that touchdown, they went for two. Because they had already kicked a couple of field goals. But on that touchdown, they went for two. Um, they came out five wide. Tyler Huntley just ran it in. Uh, and they converted the two-point conversion. So it was nice. I was like, okay, there we go. Let's get it. Uh, but the offense, J.K. Dobbins, he, again, it was, it was a lot. It's a lot of the same stuff from last week against the, in the loss to the Browns. Thank goodness this was a lesser team than them. Um, cause it, this is why, like, I'm, I'm, I'm very worried. I'm very worried about this team, especially in the playoffs, because of stuff like this It's like you, you can't keep getting away with this stuff I mean hopefully you can I would love if they can But against better teams You gotta come a lot better than this You gotta bring it a lot better than this um, Cause that, that's the, the stuff just it ain't, it ain't gonna fly man It ain't gonna fly um, Looking at the numbers uh, Gus Edwards 11 carries 99 yards 11 carries 99 yards um, J.K. Dobbins, 12 carries, 59 yards. So Gus Edwards averaged 9 per carry. J.K. Dobbins averaged 4.9 per carry. So they were both doing their thing. Um, this was more so Gus's game for him to take off. Uh, but it's like it's weird because they would get in a red zone. They would even get like within like the 15, 10-yard line. But they'd be in a red zone, and then they'd just be like, you know what? We're either not going to run with our running backs, or if we do run, we're going to do more QB keepers. And it's like, again, the, the, the play calling, the, the sequence of the play calling is just, it's still wild. It's still crazy. It's still just so, it's consistent, but it's like consistently inconsistent, if you get what I mean. So, again, that, that's a very, very big concern uh, of mine. Um, looking at the numbers, Mark Andrews, uh, three catches, 45 yards. 
So, um, I mean, one of those came on that deep pass that Tyler Huntley, he hit him in stride, which was, it was, it was beautiful. It was nice. It was nice. Um, then he had two more catches for, for 10 yards. Uh, Deshaun Jackson had one catch for 10 yards. Demarcus Robinson, his only catch was that touchdown. Josh Oliver had a catch. Justice Hill had a catch. Likely had a catch. So, again, Tyler Huntley was 9 for 17 um, for a touchdown. Uh, no sacks, which was good. So, he was getting rid of that ball. Um, so, he's learning. He's learning. Um, now, I think, especially with him having got that concussion, you, you just got to get down more. You got to get that. Because, again, like I said earlier, he was getting whacked, man. But as far as it's, – it's, it's a backup quarterback. He, he came in, managed the game, don't turn the ball over. Uh, if you can get a touchdown, great. But, yeah, just manage the game. He did it. He did it. And, again, he even got a touchdown in the process and a two-point conversion. So I'm not expecting – whenever Tyler Huntley's out there – you got to have realistic expectations, in my opinion. I'm not going to expect Tyler Huntley, oh, yeah, when he's out there, he's going to throw three, four touchdowns every game. He may even run for a touchdown. He may even have, like, 50, 60 yards rushing somewhere. I'm not going to expect that from Tyler Huntley. He's a backup, still getting adjusted to life as a starter in the NFL. So this from him, it, it, it was all right. It wasn't great, but it wasn't like, oh, man, this guy's Ted. No, no. It, it, it was straight. He's a backup. Um, the offensive line, uh, I just feel like the offensive line should have been doing more run blocking, but the Ravens, they just, they, they kept getting away from it. And, and then like, again, situation, I, I, I keep having to go back to this because it was so frustrating during the game. It's like, man, and even when the, the, it was in the fourth quarter, the Ravens were up, they were up and they were still like passing the ball like crazy. And it was like, what are they doing? What are they doing? This was a time when you're supposed to be putting the game away. You're supposed to be putting the game away, and they were still passing the ball. And, again, they, 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 can, they can't keep getting away with this. They got, like, they got to fix it. But, again, who, who knows what's going to happen. Special teams. Oh, boy, special teams. These Ravens, man, um, with the field goals getting blocked, it's just been crazy. Uh, Justin Tucker was lining up to kick a, a 50-something yard field goal, and I was I thought that he was going to miss uh, just because it was cold, it was windy. And shout-out to anybody who went out to the game. Kudos to y'all. Uh, I, I got a lot of love and respect for y'all that went out to the game. But I thought that he was going to miss the field goal because it was cold and windy, and I'm like, hey, if, if Tucker misses, I ain't mad at him. I ain't going to blame I can't blame I can't be upset. No, I ain't, can't be upset with Tucker missing a field goal. Like, this dude, like, has literally saved so many Ravens games and seasons and stuff just based off his foot alone. So I ain't getting mad at this dude for missing no field goal, but he didn't even have the opportunity to miss because it got blocked. He got blocked. And it's like, this, is this going to become a weekly thing? I hope not. And it's like, that's one area where we just know. Like, if, if it was a one block in a season, okay, we ain't tripping it. But it, this is back-to-back weeks with these blocks. And it happened, I think, it happened in a couple other games too. But one thing we know, like, all right, in offense, they're going to have their issues sometimes. Defense, they're going to have their issues sometimes too. But special teams is always an area where we just know things are going to be A-OK. -okay. They're going to be A-OK. -okay. They're going to be great because Harbaugh, we know he coached defensive backs before. But Harbaugh, he's a special teams coach, special teams ace. That's his stuff. That's his pride and joy. And it's been lacking. So they got to get this thing together quick, fast, and in a hurry. Like, think about that. Think about a, a game-winning field goal or even a game-tying field goal or a clutch-time field goal. And you're lining up the field goal unit. So now we, in the back of our minds, we got to wonder, man, is, are they gonna, is this, the offensive line going to allow uh, the field goal to be blocked? Are they going to let these guys, like, literally right through again? That's what we got to wonder about now every time that they kick a field goal because it's been happening. So they, they got to get that fixed, man. Got to get it fixed. Uh, Devin DuVernay, of course, he's done for the year. Um, and Justice Hill was at kick return. Oh, there's another thing. Andy Isabella, this was his first game up. Almost forgot about him. Um, I, I, I couldn't get too upset with him when he was on the field and, and he ain't know what was going on on that play. So I think they had to call a timeout. Uh, that, I, I forgot Tyler Huntley was talking to him. I think Pat Ricard was trying to tell him what to do too. He was just sitting there. He, he ain't know what to do. So they had to call a timeout. Um, they, Ravens warned us. Ryan Mink warned us in his article about Andy Isabella. 
He was like, oh, he could be used on some of them jet sweeps. And boy, he certainly was. He was used on the fake jet sweeps. Two of them. Two fake jet sweeps to Andy Isabella. So, yeah, man, I mean, hey, we'll see if he can get even more involved moving forward. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Bringing a little element of speed there besides Deshaun Jackson. And it could help. Can't hurt. Okay, definitely can't hurt. Um, but yeah, other than that, that 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 was that, I guess. Uh so that's offense, special teams, defense. Um defense was doing they did their thing overall. I mean nine points. They obviously did something right. And it was against uh Desmond Ritter, but still. Nine points, nine points. So I I take it. Like defense, a lot of times they be doing their thing. They'll have their hiccups here and there, but nine points, that's solid. Drake London, baller. Baller. That dude can play. He can play. Um, that guy was he was taking it to Marlon Humphrey. Um, Brandon Stevens in this game. He I think he I don't remember if it was Drake London or if it was somebody else. Somebody they they have beat him. They have beat him deep. Uh but Desmond Ritter. He either underthrew it or he overthrew it. I think he underthrew it. But whatever it was, it was incompletion. And Brandon Stevens had got beat, but he he got up. He said, "No, no." And you know how cornerbacks are. They 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 always gonna do that. Um, but yeah, defense in this game. I think Roquan Ro- Ro- Smith. They said he had like what fifteen tackles. It's like, man, <laughs> relax. Wait, he gotta tackle everybody, man. But at the same time, with him having those fifteen tackles, we also we saw a lot of missed tackles in this game. Well, maybe not a lot, but we saw a significant amount. It's like the, those missed tackles. Are starting to creep back up on the Ravens Because we saw a lot of missed tackles last week too So We just don't want that to be A habit Because uh, that could be scary um, The middle of the field This game uh, It was getting worked um, It was getting exposed by Desmond Ritter uh, He He wasn't bad He was there were, there were some times in the first half Where he looked all kinds of bad But he got himself together um, And he, he didn't look so bad uh, Anymore But he just They couldn't quite put everything all together um, So kudos to Ravens defense uh, For stopping the Falcons From putting it all together Marlon Humphrey uh, He had that big play I think that was the only turnover of the game uh, Where Drake London And that was something that they had talked about Drake London's ball security was an issue but he caught that big pass. I think it was on the fourth down to Oh, that was another thing. But real quick, we'll talk about this, then we'll talk about that after. Drake London caught that big pass on fourth down and Marlon Humphrey. Punch it out. Punch it out. Um, and then who recovered the ball? I forgot who recovered it, but Ravens recovered it. But the Falcons, they were not afraid of the Ravens at all. They were not scared of the Ravens. It, it seemed like John Harbaugh was actually on the Falcons. He was coaching the Falcons from all them fourth downs that they kept going for it on. Like, they, they were not afraid. They're like, Ravens, who? We don't care. We at their crib. We don't care. We're going for it on fourth down. We don't care. And they didn't care. They didn't care. So, um, they did convert two out of three, I think. Because one of them, they just handed the ball off to the running back. Then he got it. Um, another one. I forgot what they did on the one where they didn't convert, and then they. I, well, I guess they kind of converted, but they turned the ball over on the one to Drake, the pass to Drake with Marlon Humphrey punched it out. Um, but yeah, they they weren't scared of the Ravens. They were not scared. Um, uh, their running game was these. I know their starter had like seventy, like seventy four yards, something like that. So he was consistently running. And one thing that they were showing, they and it's like like hello, the Falcons. They they get it. They were down multiple scores in the fourth quarter with under 10 minutes left, and they were still running the ball. They were still running the ball. And see, it just, it just takes me back to last week again against the Browns. How the, the, the Falcons, see, the Falcons, they were running the ball in the fourth quarter, down multiple scores with less than 10 minutes left, and their runs uh, throughout the game weren't half as nearly as successful as J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards were last week against the Browns. But they were still running. So J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards last week against the Browns, their runs were twice as successful as the Falcons were this week against us. But the Ravens, they just stopped running against the Browns, even though their runs were popping off like crazy. So, again, um, it's just the, the, the situational play calling, the sequential play call is just it's frustrating. But, hey, 
We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, man, it's um they took care of business overall. Um they are going to be playing better teams. Like you're gonna be going up against the the Falcons. I mean the Steelers. Um, so they are a better team than these Falcons are. Um, and Steelers just coming off a high since they just beat the Raiders uh, last night. Well, when you're seeing this two nights ago. Um, so you're going to have to take care of business, man. But you want to be riding a high into the playoffs as much as you can. Uh, we'll see if Lamar ends up coming back this week to play against the Steelers. And if not, then all right, Tyler Huntley time again. Um, but I think it'll be important because the Steelers game, that was the last game where they they rolled with what was working and they didn't stop. Like J.K. Dobbins was he was doing his thing. And Ravens, they they rolled J.K. Dobbins all the way to the victory. They I is he on a pitch count or what? I I don't know what it's it's so weird. Ravens Ravens play calling is so weird, man. It is so weird. It's one of the weirdest things ever, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes, though. Anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you for 61,000 subscribers. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for supporting, and thank you for just allowing us to just have a lot of fun. Um, my apologies if I'm a little bit off during this video because um, I'm not in the best moods right now. It ain't got nothing to do with, with football. Uh, ain't got nothing to do with the Ravens. <laughs> the Ravens will mess you up. But um, I, I, I appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all. Thank y'all for support. And thank you to all the new Team Keep It Clean patrons. Thank you to all the new Team Keep It Clean channel members. Thank you to you all for listening and being willing to listen uh, whenever you get a chance to, man. I appreciate y'all very much. And we out.